This video is sponsored by Fotros. Fotros, because weather planning was yesterday. One of the most important requirements in fine art photography is to convey a message with our image. And to achieve that, we are used to changing our camera position and our camera angle in a way so that the interaction between all the elements of the composition tells a story. But to be honest, that is not enough. There is one more thing we should consider. Or shouldn't we? Ah, my friends, a very good morning. Now, in my last Red Sky video, I mentioned that it's really, really important to consider the direction of the sun or the direction where the most reds up in the sky. And then I got a question how important that really is because when we look at the image from last time, the entire sky was burning. So, how important is that really, the direction of the rats? And I thought we also have a little chance of rats predicted, rats sky predicted today. Let's go out and let's find out what happens if that is not 100%. So, first of all, I can't see anything here. It's crazy, so dark here. <laughs> And I uh, want to shoot in that direction, I'm not sure if you can see anything, I don't, I don't think so. We have a peak at the left hand side and uh, uh, empty space, or not really, a more empty sky at the right hand side. Uh, and we have lots of trees here in the front, so I'm currently just looking if I have anywhere a clear view towards my, my subject, towards my scene actually. Oh uh, yeah, uh, that's a most tricky thing here at the moment because I'm here in the forest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm sure we will find any solution here. Hello, the trees got more and more here, the more I come up here. I think I will go down a little bit again. Look better from down there. And the thing is really so important to be early enough here. I think you have uh, maybe 45 minutes before the red sky will appear. Uh, I don't have many possibilities here. I just uh, uh, look now that uh, yeah, I don't get all too many distracting trees. Um, into the direction of the red sky, the reds will be here behind me. Again, you can't see anything here, but uh, yeah, it will be a little bit brighter then. So let's go down. Fingers crossed, a fantastic photograph. doesn't really work, I have to say. I mean, I get, this, I get uh, rid of the trees here now uh, in, the, in the sky, but the problem is I have also meadow here in the foreground, which looks a little bit empty. That doesn't really help uh, the image, so it's, it's difficult. It's not a really good composition. It's a bad, it's really, really, really a bad composition. So my idea is there is a house down there. So either I could uh, use this house as a foreground element, or if this doesn't work, what could be, because there's also a big tree which I can't really see, it's still too dark. Um, I don't see where all the fine branches go. It's always difficult in a composition like that. And the second uh, possibility would be you go down, there's a road, and to photograph along the road. So um, I have to improvise here now. But yeah, <laughs> let's try for that. Oh. That is a really tricky one, I have to say. I, I'm in setup already. I found the composition. But before I was a little bit more up there and the idea was actually to photograph towards the mountains back there. So to get the reds uh, above that, that peak up there, the left hand side. And uh, yeah, that didn't really work, I have to say, because we always got not trees, not distracting trees up in the sky or something like that. I got rid of that. The problem was more, we have also trees in front of the, of the mountains and so on. We didn't get any definition, any separation there. So we didn't get any depth there. So it was just really the silhouettes of the mountains. It's not a, a, a composition that really would work, I have to say. Now, what I did is uh, when I came up, because my car is more back there in that direction, I came up this way here. And when I came up, I saw already this little farmhouse here. 
or these farmhouses here, whatever. <laughs> it looks really, really fantastic and it really tells the story of this place. It's a place where my grandfather has painted already uh, really lots of his paintings. Not, not particularly this place here, but this area here. And it, rem it reminds me a little bit to his paintings. And so I take this farm here um, into my frame as my main subject actually. And they get the rats up in the sky. The only problem we have, we get yeah, the tree up in the sky, which is not the biggest problem at all from the compositional side, I have to say. It's more, it's the, the branches are so thin, it will get a nightmare with editing, I have to say. But yeah, um, that's always a possibility. I think I will go for that. And what I really like is also the, the, this nice side light here, uh, which, which uh, the houses catch here. That's really, really fantastic. So now the last adjustments on the composition. Just tiny adjustments. It doesn't look all bad. <laughs> oh man, it's fantastic. The rats start to kick in. Just look there. We have uh, orange back there, rats up there. We have also some cumulus clouds here in front, which make a really fantastic uh, yeah, contrast here in the sky. And I really, really like that. I'm at F40, ISO 100, F10, and I would say, let's make the click. I'm in love with this image. And I think this is especially because of this amazing contrast between the silence here down on the ground with these two huts here and this kind of, yeah, I'm a get on up there in the sky. Crazy, isn't it? Now, I just have one big problem now. You know, originally I wanted to showcase what happens when the direction of the reds is not ideal. But it is ideal in the image I got. The sun was right beside that peak here before it rose. And this is why the rats are exactly in the right place for this image. But let me show you out in the field how the sky got affected by the rats actually. Oh man, what a fantastic morning. Another question is how important is that really, the direction of the sun or the direction of the, where the most rats are at the sky. So when I look back there, we don't have rats at all. I mean, a little bit because these are cumulus clouds up there that can work. I mean, they're just tiny, they're just tiny clouds because they are quite high, but they don't have a big area at the, at the bottom of them. So they don't catch much uh, light. Just here from, from the side, maybe. Cumulus clouds work from the side. Also, the other direction, by the way, could also work. But the, the, the rural fire skies, where you want to have really much of rats up there, is always exactly in that direction where the sun goes up. And when you photograph with around four 40 millimeters as I did today and also in my last we, uh, uh, Red Sky video. It's not the biggest problem at all when you go a little bit more 10 degrees to the left or right or something like that. But you should um, really consider where the sun goes up. It's really important because when you photograph in that direction, you will not be really happy. Also not in that. Photograph towards the sun when you want to photograph Red Sky. Yeah, that is really, really important. You know, my original plan was actually to go up more there to shoot into that direction. And then the sun had risen left beside that peak, which had also shifted the reds more to the left. And in the worst case, that could completely unbalance an image. So the direction of the reds is really, really important. But there is one thing that is even more important than being accurate with the direction. And that is the position of the clouds. We need clouds to get red sky. By the way, that is often misunderstood. Yeah, I often get messages like, but Christian, I got red sky without clouds. No, you didn't. That's another weather phenomenon. That's orange stripe or pink stripe in blue hour. The atmosphere uh, starts to glow in, in such a case with orange or pink stripe uh, in such a case. For red sky, we need clouds. Yeah, I mean, it's logical. They have to catch the red light if you want to get a fire sky. It's the canvas of a fire sky, the clouds. And we can't predict the exact 
position of the clouds. That is impossible. But what we can do is we can look at the amount of clouds at the red layer. When we look at the image from today, there are mid-level clouds and high-level clouds in this one, right? The mid-level clouds got illuminated, the high-level clouds didn't. And this is because the red sky was predicted for the mid-level clouds, not for the high-level clouds. So what I do is when I see that there is a red sky predicted for the mid-level clouds, I look at the amount of clouds at the mid-level layer, obviously. <laughs> and if there is a red sky predicted for high-level clouds instead, I look at the amount of high-level clouds, of course. I think this morning we had 50% mid-level clouds, something like that, anything like that predicted. And uh, that is already quite little, I have to say. It would be better to have a higher amount here, but as the clouds came in the east, where the sun came up, it worked for me. So always look at the amount of clouds for the layer where the red sky is predicted. When there are no clouds at all, it will just work if there's blue hour predicted so that the atmosphere will start to glow. But therefore, you need more than just clear sky. It's also often, really often misunderstood. And I made already a video about that. I will link it here for you. My friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, give me a thumb up. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.